so this is the effect uh, that we're looking for the first thing i recommend doing is grabbing some reference images uh, that you can work with so i got this reference image and i sort of studied it and i saw that you know uh, even though the hair is smooth here it has like this kind of warble around it but it's based off of like where you'd expect the hair's normals to be whereas here you can see it's like a smooth normal uh, but there is a slight warble because they've added it in and then here they kind of have like ridges as well even though this is again a smooth part of his model they've used like normal maps to create this sort of effect so in our fragment function we're just going to set our albedo to the albedo texture at our uv and then multiply it by a tint so take the tints color rgb values and take the textures color rgb values multiply them to create the new color and then assign that to the albedo metallic property is just the metallic uniform and now we get to the juicy part of our entire shader the light function so define a vector called normal if we if the person chooses to use their normal map uh, create a variable called normal from texture if they choose to animate it then when we sample the normal map that they have given us we'll add time to it multiplied by time scale so that it doesn't go like insanely fast take the color of it and then plug that into here which will be our normal from the texture right otherwise if they tell you it's not animated then just take the normal map at the uv and its color and that's about it then we simply take the normal from the light and subtract the normal from the texture to get ourselves the new normal that we want otherwise if they choose to not use a normal map just take the same normal that's given to us by the light shader if they ask for a view biasing then what we're going to do is the normal we're going to subtract the view vector multiplied by the view bias that they can specify and then with the view multiply which is another a uniform that we define up top right and this will basically bias it so that the normals kind of always like a little bit uh, pointed towards the way the camera is facing so that some part of it is always lit up and you don't get like full darkness uh, on the entire object then we calculate the dot product of the normal and the light so if you don't know what a dot product is it's okay uh, because we're not actually using the dot product in the literal sense what we're really doing with the dot product is using it for comparison what does that mean basically the dot product can also be used to compare two vectors and the way we can do that is because the dot product between two vectors relies on three things the direction of the first and second vector as well as the angle between them the angle can be calculated using using trigonometry but we don't even have to do that because Godot just handles that for us we just say dot and we give it the two vectors it will find the angle between them and of course the two vectors direction is already given through whatever you've supplied to that right so using this information right all that we know even if we don't know how the dot product is calculated what we do know from the dot product is that it relies on these three things right the first vector the second vector and the angle between them therefore whenever we turn the camera right or sorry whenever we move the light around not turn the camera my bad whenever we move the light around the direction of the light will change and so the dot product will also change so using this information you can sort of understand that the dot product based on what way our object is oriented in uh, regards to the light we'll always get a different result from this dot product right and that's very important because when we're trying to compare something we have to make sure that there is some sort of changing comparison to be made so here's what we're doing we're finding the dot product of the normal and light and this bias is basically just what it says so we bias it in a certain direction or we bias the light in a certain direction if we want to create some uh, specific kind of look which the person can do from the shader but all we're doing is then using the dot product to compare these two things we want to make this sort of swift transition between base color and shader color so how do we do that well we use a smooth step so a smooth step will basically go from one value to another value but it will do that based off of a 
blending amount right so shadow size will basically tell us how much of the um, model do we want covered by the shadow while the shadow blend is basically how do you want to how smoothly do you want to go between the shadow color and the base color of the texture right but we have to offset it by the shadow size because otherwise it'll start from the beginning of the object which is not what we want instead we want the uh wanted to already start from where the shadow size is and then choose a blending amount from there right so to create this swift sort of change we have a very low shadow blend now one minus is just we take our smooth step value and do one minus that uh, and then we multiply it by the light color as well as the light tint which is in uh, uniform as well as the attenuation so what this whole calculation is doing is basically making sure that our change we've got our change now right we want to make sure that our change also reflects what the light color is as well as how strong the light is as well as whatever light tint the person wants to add on top of that right so we give them sort of like full control right allow them to have multiple light colors have allow them to have like stronger or weaker lights allow them to change uh, what the tint is after doing all of this and then of course uh, taking our smooth step value uh, into account with all of these things right as well as our second calculation right here where we're basically taking the sh the shadowed part of our uh, model which is basically like this dark part here and multiplying it by a constant that's greater than one i found 1.4 to be uh, good uh, and then we just multiply it by the shadow color because we don't want it to just be like pure black or something uh, we want the shadow color to be something the person can change so again give them the option to change the shadow color and then subtract the shadow extra intensity so this will give us the dark value right this will give us this part of the calculation will give us whatever this dark color is right but on top of that we want to give them the option to sort of make it more intensely shadowed and the way we do that is to take away even uh, more from this so you have to you got to think of this as the shadow color and then by subtracting shadow extra intensity what we're doing is we're taking the shadow color and making it even darker we're shifting it even lower right so that makes an even darker color now we just take our two calculations that we did and uh, add them together so we get the effect of the light as well as the effect of the shadow and then uh, we store that in a variable because we have to do one last step the rim lighting so using everything we did over here you probably already understand what's going on here so we're defining the we're doing a smooth step right between the rim light size and then the rim light blend plus size which is the same thing we did earlier in our smooth step and what are we comparing we're comparing our fresnel effect now our fresnel effect is basically like it will go from the outside of the object and will start off as a very bright color but then as it comes further and further closer to the center of the object it becomes darker and darker so that's what a fresnel effect is now you don't need to know how to recreate this because Godot shaders already has a really useful snippet it's actually the same snippet that i'm using over here this fresnel effect so you can literally copy paste this from Godot shaders and this will give you a basic fresnel effect right so now that we've got our basic fresnel that'll be a comparison right because again the normal in view will be two vectors that change so we can use that for comparison and then put that in to our smooth step right again the same way we did shadow size and then shadow blend plus shadow size we're doing rim light size and then rim light blend plus rim light size that'll give us our sort of smooth value for the rim light and then now we just put all of that together take the uh shadow and the light colors which is over here then add in our rim light color which is over here and our rim light color we want to make sure that it's multiplied by whatever the actual rim light color the person wants is so again give them the option to change whatever you want and the last part add that to the diffuse light why add why add this is something i want you to understand right why are we adding and why are we multiplying by albedo okay i can if i open the link mesh right here okay why are we 
adding the diffuse light and why are we doing why we're we multiplying by albedo did we not already set our albedo over here so what is the point of doing this well i'll show you if i take out the albedo that happens can you see kind of what's happening i don't know if it's maybe it's not immediately apparent what's going on but what's happening is the light is overriding or sort of like pushing over everything that's there on the albedo right which we don't want we just wanted to light it but we want whatever is lit to be the color of the albedo not be like pure white we want it to be the color of the albedo so that's why we multiply it by the albedo color which we already defined in our fragment function right now that gives us all the lit parts of our um of our object but how do we get the dark parts well, the dark parts of course will already be as a part of this so when we multiply the whenever we get to a dark part of the object we and we multiply it by the albedo that will effectively darken the albedo's color at that position which will give us this shadowy effect and again as before we can play around with the shadow extra intensity to get even higher values for our shadow but now for the last part why are we adding diffuse light this is something which i didn't understand for quite a while but i i actually understand it now and i want you to understand why we're adding to the diffuse light instead of just setting it so the best way i can explain this is to get rid of this entirely right let's just set our diffuse light to this color and let me show you what happens when we do that let's get in our omni light and i think you can already see what's going on here right but our omni light let me just get it out of the way so you can see this is normally shaded Link, right? This is Link getting his influence from the directional light that's down here, right? And he's normally shaded and everything's good and blah, blah, blah. Now let me bring in my Omni light, right? The moment I bring in my Omni light, that happens. You see how it just cuts out the other light? It's not like the directional light doesn't exist anymore. The moment this comes into the vicinity of the object, that's it. The directional light's effect is gone. It's just not coming back. And that's not what we want, right? Instead, we want both of them to blend together. And that's why we add the uh, diffuse light to whatever existing diffuse light is already there. So when we start off, there will be dif no diffuse light. So it'll just be setting it to whatever color of the light is there. But the moment we introduce a secondary light, it's actually going to add that color on which will not get rid of the previous lighting but rather give us the effect of this light added on top of it and what this means also is that we can have multiple light sources as many as we want and that's about it that's how you create or recreate uh this effect in gido uh i hope you enjoy uh, i'll leave uh sort of like reference links in the description for anything that you might need i'll also put the basic fresnel effect uh over there so you can grab it and uh yeah so make sure you check that if you want to recreate this effect or if you just straight up want the shader uh you can catch it on godoshaders.com uh, anyway uh i hope this helps uh and yeah i'll see you next time